Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel on linguistics and language learning. In this video, I'm demonstrating the use of three time grams in analyzing sentences or several kinds of sentences, especially those experiencing transformational rules. Thing. Of uh, these sentences or the sentences that we are going to analyze in this video are taken from uh, the comments, okay, from the comments submitted to my channel. And I think this is very beneficial, not only to the person who sent uh, this, uh, uh, this comment or who submitted this comment, but also for those who need to know further how uh, three diagrams are applicable in analyzing any kinds of sentences. So the title is Working with Transformational Rules. Okay, why I said working with transformational rules, because in this video, you're gonna see that um, three diagrams work in analyzing different kinds of transformational rules. So I have, uh, I made the title of this video, Working with Transformational Rules. Now, let's see the first sentence to analyze is, why are you interested in syntax? And you know that this is an interrogative sentence and exactly WH interrogative. Why? Because we use here WH question, why? Now, Intricative sentence is the result of transformation. Therefore, when you want to analyze any intricative sentence by using a tree diagram, you have to provide its deep structure earlier. So before you draw a diagram, okay, before you draw a diagram for the, the, the sentence, okay, why are you interested in syntax, you have to determine its deep structure. Now, let's see, this is the three diagram for the deep structure of the sentence way. Are you interested in syntax? Okay, and the transformation of course is called WH intricative transformation. Okay, WH intricative transformation. Now, any sentence okay, is composed of NP and VP, so, we have now in this three diagram, we have sentence which is composed of NP, noun phrase and VP verb phrase. And we we use you here, okay, immediately under the under the, the branch or yeah, under the slot of NP and without you know um finding out the actual or the 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 you know what we call as the direct constituent of the NP, but we immediately write you here in order to show that um, uh, I assume, or when you draw a diagram like this, means that you assume that the uh, the reader or the uh, the person who reads this have already understood, okay, how you is derived, and then. The verb phrase here is composed of four branches. And you know that the number of branches depends on the phrase structure of a certain phrase. So it is not limited only to two branches. It can be more than two, but it can be two, composed of only two branches. Okay, so we have auxiliary linking verbs, um, adjective phrase and adverb phrase. Okay, so the auxiliary must refer to the uh, R here. So uh, before coming to R itself, we have to determine that the element of auxiliary is mood and tense. So these are the two elements of auxiliary in this sentence, mood and tense. And mood here is question because we're gonna change this sentence. We're gonna transform the sentence into a question. And the tense, I think it can be the using of R, so the tense is present. And the linking verb is B, okay? Because R in this sentence 
okay, are in the sentence indicates the use of linking verb be or be as a linking verb, not be as the auxiliary. So now, um, we have here interested in syntax and we don't need to make details of analysis on AP because it has already been understood. So we use here a triangle instead in order to show that um, you know already okay, uh, how the, the, the AP interested in syntax is derived. And then we have here adverb phrase and adverb phrase here is indefinite is an indefinite constituent. Why indefinite constituent? Because we cannot find any adverb phrase in this sentence. Okay, so we have here uh, SME. SME uh, is in in the purpose or in the context of learning through time or learning syntax. SME refers to the indefinite element, and reason because. The question with you here is why, which needs okay, the answer in the form of reason. And then uh, we come up to the intentional transformation. So B here, okay, uh, and the tense is present, so the result is R. Whenever the tense is plus, and then the linking verb is B, the result will be word. Okay, so this is actually the process in our mind bef before we decide whether we use are or were. Okay, so this is the process. That's why this is the deep structure and this is the surface structure of inflectional transformation. So you are interested in syntax. Now, um, we transform again this sentence into an interpretive sentence or into a question by using question with why. Okay, now we have here a sentence, but this sentence is not only composed of two elements, but four elements or four constituents. Okay, um, we add here auxiliary as the constituent. Why? Because the nature of Intricative sentence in English is the inversion. Okay, what is inverted? The auxiliary is moved okay, into the beginning of a sentence or into the position before the subject or the noun phrase. So we move here auxiliary. We have here auxiliary <clears throat> as the the element of VP. Okay, we move this auxiliary. Okay, into the position that comes before the noun phrase. Okay, now we have here auxiliary. And this one we have here adverb phrase. Adverb phrase here is derived from the adverb phrase in the deep structure in the form of indefinite um, constituent for reason. Okay, so we move here. Okay, now uh, the end of our phrase is no longer indefinite because we have already determined that the end of our phrase here is represented by adverb question, okay, or question words that serves as the adverb. Okay, and of course, you know, the question word used here is why. Okay, so this is the function of SME reason. We have already made the slot in our deep structure and we move it okay, into the beginning of a sentence okay, in the surface structure. And then the auxiliary is here B, okay, and the NV is U, okay, we have already moved it. And then we have here VB. V, L, and A, B. And then we have here auxiliary R, okay, R. Uh, R in this context, okay, you, you, you've got to be careful because R in this context does not only function as, as an auxiliary, but it is the verb actually in that sentence. 
acts. Okay, it is. It it also acts as the linking verbs. So we use here zero marker for the linking verb because the word R here. Okay, the word R here consists of two functions. Okay, or serve two functions. The first one is as the auxiliary, and the second one as the linking verb. Okay. So we have here, why are you? And then AP is the phrase interested in sentence. So this is the analysis of a sentence. Why are you interested in X? Now let's come to the more complicated sentence or uh, the more complicated interpretive sentence. Are you interested in drawing the English three times? Okay, you see here, there are several kinds of transformation and one of which is gerund transformation. So whenever you find a verb in, okay, serve as a noun in a sentence, if you want to analyze it by using three time, you have to consider that um, Gerund is the result of transformation that is called gerund transformation. Okay, so before we transform this sentence into an interrogative sentence, we have to transform this sentence in the form of uh, gerund transformation. Okay, so this is gerund transformation. Okay, so we have here subject, and P and FIP as usual, and then Okay, we have already known U, so we use triangle U. And then we have here VL and AP, okay, to represent R, okay, and interested in drawing the English three time. This is a bit different because in the previous sentence, we have only interested in syntax. So it is simply the element or the constituent of the AP. Okay, however, it is more complicated in this sentence. So we have here that AB is composed of adjective and prepositional phrase. And then the prepositional phrase is composed of prepositions and noun phrase. And then we have here noun phrase, which is composed of um, complement phrase, a phrase which is used to complete Okay, to complete the structure. And the, the complement phrase here is in the form of a sentence. Okay, in the form of a sentence, indicating by the, the existence of VP in the structure. Later, we, we, you're going to find it. So, this is it. Here you are. We have here a sentence which is composed of NP and VP. Okay, and now NP is considered as the indefinite element. So we use SME. And then the VP here is composed of verb plus NP. Okay, now we, we make the element. So we have here U and then we have here R as the linking verbs and we have here interested as the adjective. Now let's continue with this one. Okay, the proposition is in. Okay, so with that, we have drawing. Okay, we have here drawing. So the verb here is draw. We use the capital letters. Okay, all of the letters are written in caps, in capital letters, in order to, uh, to, to show that this actually, uh, the form of that word or that verb in the deep structure. Okay, draw. And then we have here, you see, the elements that we have already known how to analyze it, that is the English tree diagram. Now, let's transform this structure into uh, uh, a deep structure, uh, sorry, a surface structure in the form of general transformation. Now, you see that this is composed of NP and VP, and VP is composed of VL and AP, exactly similar with this one, okay? So we have here also adjective and PP, okay, adjective and PP. And then we also have PAP and NP 
exactly similar with the 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 structure in the deep structure, and then we have here uh complement phrase. Okay, again, this is still similar with the diagram in the deep structure. Okay, we have here a sentence. However, in the deep in the surface structure, we no longer use here SME because we don't use it. Okay, so SME is the element that we may use it, that may exist in our mind whenever we want to construct any sentence or any structure, but it is no longer used in the surface structure. That's actually the function of SME. So we no longer have here the MP, with it as and VP, and then VP is composed of V plus NP, and oh, you see that the verb here has already been changed into trophy. Okay, because we don't use any subject or any NP here, immediately we use a verb. And you know that the verb that comes after the preposition must be in the form of gerund or uh, a uh, verb in that functions as a noun, and <clears throat> we have the English three times. Okay, now, um, by having this two type frames, surface and, uh, uh, sorry, the uh, deep structure and surface structure, okay, uh, we already have here the result in the form of gerund transformation, but not yet, okay, not yet interpretive transformation. In other words, we haven't finished yet our analysis on the sentence, are you interested in drawing the English tree diagram? Now let's continue with the um, question transformation. So here you are, this is what we have after we change or after we transform the deep structure into the chair form. So we have here, you are, interested in drawing the English tree type, and now we change it, we transform it into an interpretive sentence. So we have here interpretive transformation or yes, no interpretive transformation because you don't use a question word in this sentence. Now, what we need to do is to move the observer, okay, okay to precede the position of N. Okay, so it comes before the NP. Okay, so NP VP, and we add here one branch before the NP auxiliary. So we use here B as the, the auxiliary because R. Okay, and you see that the sentence needs R okay, as one of its constituents. And then uh, we have, we already move U after the auxiliary. And then VP is composed of BL and AB. Okay, we don't have auxiliary because auxiliary has been moved. Okay, and you see that actually um, we we have here the same element, only the auxiliary is moved okay, into the beginning. Okay, now if you have a sentence, yeah. Now we 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 Right here are as the constituents of B, and of course, you know, the linking verb here is zero cross. Why zero cross? Because R here has two functions or serves the functions as auxiliary and also as the linking verbs. So we have here R, U, and then we have here interested okay we have the the same okay we have the same structure with the uh, previous three diagram okay and drawing the English three diagram. so here you are this is the analysis of an interpretive sentence are you interested in drawing the English three diagram okay now let's come to the last sentence here yeah, based on your comments Okay, this is based on the comment sentence was taken from the comments on my uh, on my YouTube channel. 
So this is the last sentence to be analyzed in this video. When I when he came, I had that. And you see, whenever the um, compound sentence, or sorry, the complex sentence begins with a uh, conjunction, and begin with conjunction, this must be the form of surface structure. Okay, this must be the first uh, in the form of uh, surface structure because based on our deep structure, okay, um, the uh, question, uh, sorry, not question, but the conjunction okay, should come after the main sentence or should come after uh, after the uh, yeah we can say here yeah, the uh main elements of a sentence okay, or main clause should come after main clause but here you see that subordinate clause when he came okay when he came uh precedes yeah when he came subordinate clause precedes the uh, main clause i had left therefore okay in a deep structure okay the deep structure, we must have the structure like this. I had left when he came. I had left when he came. Okay, so this is the main clause. Okay, the main clause, I had left. And when he came, and these are uh, the, uh, the uh, elements or the constituents of I had left when he came. Yeah, by using three diagrams. So auxiliary, we have perfect here, and then we have perfect left. Okay, we have a subordinate conjunction when, okay, because you see that actually the adverb phrase here is composed of a sentence because you know that the adverb phrase is composed of uh, envy and feeling. Okay, well, so we have here. Now, when we we move this or when we transform this deep structure into a surface structure, this transformation is called adverb phrase transformation. Why? Because the element that we need to transform is the element of adverb of phrase. Okay? See here. Okay? So this is actually the sentence, okay, in the our deep structure, NP and PP. Okay, and then VP. But in the service structure, we move the end of phrase into the beginning of the sentence. So we have one more element here. Okay, so we just move all the elements of the end of phrase into the beginning of the sentence. And the rest remains similar. Okay, so I had left just really simple. Okay, that's all. Okay, the the use of three diagrams in analyzing uh, sentences that experience transformational rules. Well, that's all, and see you in the next video.